Hey gang, Big Ed. So uh, one of my YouTube followers, Vincinius Rizende, hope I got that right, pretty close, asked me for some studio stories. So um, this is really a studio slash personality story of somebody I'd worked with for many, many years because he was absolutely one of the best of all time. Nobody better, in my opinion, than Reggie Young. Reggie Young had played on more pop recordings than any other guitarist in history. As far as I know, that's what I was told. And I believe it. He was son of a preacher man, suspicious minds, um, uh, all the box top stuff. Uh, when he came to Nashville, he was playing on all these country hits and he was playing on some Muscle Shoals stuff. He played on some Neil Diamond stuff. I mean, it's just completely out of hand. And Reggie, besides being involved in all that stuff, he just wasn't there. He actually was a major, major imprint on all of those records. I mean, I asked him to show me Suspicious Minds once and he showed it to me and I was like, oh, wow, you know, that's the guy. That's the guy. <laughs> because it was just pitch perfect. And a friend of mine from New York was like, oh, that's not how you play Suspicious Minds. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, I've seen, you know, video. Of, I'm like, well, that was shown to me by the guy who played it on the record. So however you're playing it, it's wrong. And then I did a session with my buddy, with Reggie later, and he was like, oh yeah, okay, I've been playing it wrong. <laughs> so that was, that was a pretty funny um, little happening. But um, Reggie was just unique. Like when Reggie got inducted, um, I don't know if it was into the Hall of Fame of Musicians. He, there was a... There was a an, an event where he had to, he was going to be interviewed uh, at the Country Music Hall of Fame and he was going to need to play all the famous songs. And he called me up. He's like, he's like, hey, Ed, how does Drift Away go again? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, he's like, well, you know, I played it once. <laughs> you know, the opening, that amazing guitar opening to Dobie Gray's Drift Away. He played it once, and that was my experience with him in the studio. Reggie would just play things once, and if you did a second take, it was different. It was different. Every take was different. If you had him overdub, that was not the best way to use Reggie because, again, everything would be different. And he was kind of sort of improvising, but he was feeling it. And his feel was unlike anybody's I've ever heard. Like we're talking hundredths of a millisecond locked into, it was like Steely Dan locked. Like those guys couldn't move notes to be locked like Reggie just played naturally. And it was with a fluidity and a soul that you, you just, I mean, he was the first double scale musician. He was the first triple scale musician. And he didn't do it for money. He did it because he had too much work. So he thought if he kept raising his rates, that his workload would be more manageable. And no, people were like, double? Sure. Triple? Sure. Because they wanted Reggie. That's how special a guy he was. And he told me many, many, many stories. Um, one time we were rehearsing in my house for a gig. He was gracious enough to play gigs with me as well. And I had this Elvis lamp, this Elvis headlamp. And so the Elvis headlamp was behind Reggie as we were rehearsing and we ran through all songs a couple hours. And then at the end, I was like, oh, shoot, Reg, I'm sorry. Um, does that bother you? Uh, have an Elvis of, oh, you know, I forgot, you know, you and Elvis kind of came up together and he's like, well, no, well, yeah. That was great. That was just Reggie. Reggie was really mild mannered and humble and one of the most tremendous musicians ever, ever. One more uh, story is when he was on tour with the Highwaymen because, you know, he played with Waylon Jennings and Willie and, you know, and Chris and Johnny for all those years. They wanted him to go out on the road. So 
He went out on the road with them, and their first gig was in Oslo in Norway. And they went to the Grand Hotel, which is rather grand. And when he got up to his room, he realized he had the presidential suite. And he called down to Willie, and he said, hey, Willie, uh, listen, man, they made a mistake. Um, I, I think they gave me your room. I've got the presidential suite. And Willie's like, nope, that's your room. Enjoy. Reggie Young, check out his discography Check out his work. Listen to the mellifluousness of that guy's playing, and you understand why he had such a long and illustrious career in music. And it was my honor, my honor, my pleasure to be around him and call him my friend. And I'm going to show you the poster on my wall right now. Signed by Reggie. Ed, you're too cool. Peace, Reggie Young.